Hello everyone, my name is Cristian Neculescu and you know me for a lot of integration with UAPAP, the connector for Salesforce, ServiceNow, Jira, Confluence and so on. I did a lot of videos of Trigger, the, the software, uh, the, uh, the UAPAP process from different softwares and including from, I did some triggers from um, Gmail and I show you a version with Outlook how to, to trigger. And the last video, it was about different triggers and how to work with Gmail. Today we'll do a version of how to work with Outlook yeah, and how to approach um, uh, emails with Outlook. So the subject will be how to read emails and send emails and reply to emails uh, with Outlook function, how to use filter UiPath with uh, uh, Outlook, how to trigger the process from the orchestrator and here I will just explain where you have to look on the uh, uh, other videos and how to schedule this process from Windows, okay? So let's start with the, with the simple process. But first I will change the resolution of my PC. So back with the, with the new uh, resolution. So, like I said, today we'll talk about Outlook. So I have Outlook, here I have some functions um, uh, with Outlook to be able to get emails, to reply to emails, to send to emails and so on. So what I need to configure? First, I need to have uh, the Outlook on my PC. Yeah? So this is the Outlook is configured with, with my Gmail. And to be able to get the emails, I just uh, drag and drop this function, uh, this activity, get Outlook uh, mails. I select my account. I can have multiple accounts on my, uh, on my Outlook. I select that I want this account. I select that I want the mail folder inbox. You can have here different folders and you can uh, you can um, tell the robot what folder has to read and so on. I use the general inbox. Yeah. I can put a filter, but this will talk later about this filter. Let's delete it. And um, uh, I will copy paste the filter here. Uh, and then uh, we have here to be able to read only the, uh, the message, only the read messages to mark as read after read top and so on. Yeah. This function will return a number of a list of messages. Yeah. Then on this list, we'll do a for each. And on this for each, we'll, uh, uh, so as usual here, you have to go to the, uh, to the argument and uh, you need to say mail message, yeah? Mail message, by default it's, uh, so you have to select this one, mail message, .net mail message. Okay, I already select this one. And this will make uh, a for each on all my uh, objects. And I have the item, which on the item I will put uh, subject, from, um, so I have all the, the values from sender, from I like the address or the display name or, and so on. We'll print the subject, yeah? So for uh, sort of for basic stuff, we'll print just the subject. So we'll see here on the output, I have here on my email, I have uh, four emails, yeah? Now it's five, let's delete this one, okay. So I have four emails, which are unread. So um, I will see here for uh, four titles, okay? Good. Here on the, um, on the Outlook, I have also this reply to the email. So I'm able, because on the Gmail, I don't have this option here. The system is able to know the ID of the email communicate with Outlook and reply to, uh, to the stuff. So I indicate the item, the email that I want to reply. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, the response, it's a robot response. And uh, let's put a condition, yeah? So let's not reply to all the email. I will say here that uh, I will reply only to the subject that contains something. Yeah, let's see the, uh, uh, so, um, I will reply to the subject that contains Ion, yeah? So this email was coming from um, uh, Christian Negulescu at uap.com, yeah? I will set this uh, um, uh, to be unread, okay? 
and I will put the code to be, uh, so I put here the condition, I will say if subject item, item subject to lower, subject to lower, to lower, uh, yeah, contains on, contains. Ion, you respond to the subject, yeah? If this, you respond to, uh, to my email with uh, response and so on, yeah? So, if I run it, the system will display all the stuff, and on my UiPath email, I should receive this email for the robot. I don't have it yet. Let's wait for the uh, system to, uh, because it's from Gmail to UiPath. I'm back, so I received the, uh, uh, the response for Testion, yeah? So I, this is the response for the Testion with, uh, with robot test, okay? So in this way, I replied to, to the email. Good. So, I have the decision, I can reply, I can send an email, I can send here, for example, uh, let's disable the, um, this activity. I can go and say, I want to send the email. If I send an email, I will select that I want to, I put the, uh, the email where I want to send, I can put the subject, the body, I can attach files. Uh, I can, uh, I need to put here, I need to provide the account, because if I have on my uh, my account, uh, my uh, Outlook multiple accounts, I need to select the account, yeah? So if I run it like this, uh, uh, hello buddy, video, video, okay? So if I run it, the system will send an email to my other uh, um, account. We'll see here uh, that the email look the subject, hello body video, okay? So that's the basic stuff with uh, uh, how to send, how to reply to emails and so on. Now, the second stuff that I want to talk and I showed you, it's about filters. Now, for filters, I personally prefer to go and use this, uh, um, this stuff from the, um, uh, from uh, UiPath Studio and from uh, .NET. So basically I have the item and on the, uh, on the item I have all the, uh, all the stuff. So I go to body and on the body I can use uh, all the type of uh, contains, all, all the functions that I have in a Visual Basic .NET or, um, or on uh, C Sharp, yeah? So everything is here and it's easy for me to, to use it like this. But some people want to use the filters from, um, um, let's uh, put here something valid, subject uh, will contain something. Okay, but you can use also the filter from here, yeah? So here you have a filter that you can put on Outlook. So let's understand what, I, what is this filter and what uh, type of version we can have on this filter. So on this filter, we can put data like this, yeah? So we can put inside from to Christian to CC. Importance, I want all the emails that have importance high. From the sender address should be robot that uh, um, sells for a Gmail. I can put the receive time and we'll do a test with, with this receive time, yeah? Uh, and um, the receive time will, uh, will need to be on the format that it on, on my Outlook. So my Outlook, take a look here because I'm in Romania. The format is uh, mount, um, uh, on my PC it's, uh, it's mount day, uh, uh, mount day year, yeah? So I need to, to respect this format. I can put a subject, I can combine this stuff. So I can say it's from the name of the email and has the subject, or I can put an and and not, or I can put an or. So you can do a lot of combination of, um, of, uh, of data inside of the, the filters, yeah? So let's uh, make an example with uh, this filter. So let's uh, stop a little uh, and uh, share again. 
yeah okay back let's uh, let's try that filter yeah so on the filter here i put receive time should be higher that uh daytime now you know here it's uh, um so basically you have the daytime from uh uh, from visualbasic.net you write now and you write uh, add uh, days for example so the system will, will help you with uh, with uh, with this stuff yeah so i will say uh, i want all the emails from the last two days yeah so i will say uh, daytime now minus two so the or and here i will com uh, convert it to uh, like i said in my pc it's mount day day year year that's the format yeah Okay, uh, I will uh, I will put all this. Uh, uh, so I will put all these examples on um, uh, uh, inside of the description or on a file on a GitHub with uh, with the description. You have to have all all this stuff. Yeah, I will create a file and I will share it with you to be able to easy to copy paste and so on. Uh, now, if I run it like this, the system will return only the this uh, these emails i just put uh, read emails and uh, you see here this is from 3 november and this is from 28 uh, uh, october yeah so if i run it now the system will print just the subject of the last two emails if i modify this and say let's say 12 days ago so if I go here and say 12, that mean 31 October, you will see that I have also this email, yeah? So also this email. If I want also this one, I will put 20 days ago, okay? I put 20 days ago. And I will have also that email. So in this way, you use the filters. But like I said, for me, it's better to use the. Uh, so for me, it's easier to uh, to use the .NET functions and so on. Good. So we talk about filters. Now we want to talk about trigger a process from Orchestrator. And here I will go back to the high resolution. So I will stop. Okay, back. Let's talk about trigger to the orchestrator. If I have this process on the orchestrator, I have uh, multiple ways to trigger. If you remember on my last video, I sent some comments from uh, um, Power Automate to start the process inside of the orchestrator. So I can uh, send a command to start the process, to wait for the process to finish, to get the data and so on. Another uh, uh, option, it's here. I showed you, so please use this uh, video with uh, uh, Gmail trigger and you have here on the, um, um, on this minute, you have all the details. Uh, I will not uh, repeat here. So you can watch this video to show how we do triggers from orchestrator. On the basic stuff, I can go here on the orchestrator, have the process and um, uh, let's say add trigger and I can say uh, a time schedule yeah to be able to 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 trigger this on a time schedule and to check the the the, the process will, will be started and the, uh, the process will, will will check the email from uh, hour to hour minute to minute how you configure or you can start the process from a queue now to be able to do this i have another video on my youtube that show you um, uh, how to to write with Power Automate, you are able to write here a data to the queue, yeah? So you have a video here dedicated that allow you to show, to write uh, uh, with Power Automate, you write uh, data to the queue and this will trigger the process. Again, for the full details, you have this video with Gmail triggers and I explain very well there how to do all the steps. Now, let's go further because it's Outlook, and a lot of people, they will want to use the process from here, yeah? So uh, the idea is like this. Normally, you just publish the process here. Let's, let me publish the process here and I'll be back. Back. So let's understand. Normally, you need to run the process from here as an assistant because you are on, on the local PC and 
you go and run the process and uh, do the stuff. Now, I modify the process and now the process will do this. He will read the emails, only the unread emails, and they, he will mark the, the emails as read, yeah? And he will reply to the email that the robot uh, uh, respond to your request, okay? Let's see this working. So basically from my other account, I will send uh, an email uh, to uh, cnegulescu at uh, um, gmail.com. Hello, robot. Robot. Here I have uh, body. Okay. I send the email. Nothing happened there. We can go and see that uh, we, we received the email or not. Yeah. And now, on the day, on time of the day, I will go and uh, call this process. Yeah. When I'm on the PC, I call this process because that's the idea to have this process call when you, when you want because it's on on your PC. And you can see that the robot respond. The robot responds to your request, okay? But there is a lot of request to have a schedule for this, yeah? And uh, this is not uh, the safest way to schedule. I just I will, I will show you this stuff uh, to show that um, it's possible, but uh, we don't recommend it. We recommend it the version with the orchestrator and so on. Because you are on this PC and it's not okay to schedule something inside of your PC. Yeah, but if you want to do it, you can do it like this. Yeah. So, if I want to schedule this on the Windows, even if it's not recommended, I will basically do a command like this in command prompt. I will show you the command and I will uh, will test it and will explain, yeah? So the command will be like this. I will call the UI robot file and I will give him the, um, uh, the XAML file, yeah? And he will execute this XAML file. In my case, the, uh, the XAML file is here, yeah? So this is the location of the XAML file. So I call this XAML file and he will uh, run this XAML file. Now, to show you that this is working, basically I will go here, I will send another email uh, to Cinegulescu. So test from CMD, uh, CMD command, command send yeah so the message was sent probably i received the message on, on the outlook and now i will call it from here yeah so i will go and call this so the uh, the robot uh, was called and let's take a look on uh, uh, on our stuff and i think i have the answer you can see i have the answer CMD command and uh, the robot response to your request. So now the next step is to put this command on a bot and uh, put a trigger on the uh, uh, on the on the Windows. So I'll stop. Back with more friendly resolution. So I have a bot file. Yeah, I will have a start bot file with exactly that command. And now. I will go, I will write task schedule. Yeah. I will select create a task. Here I will say test robot two description email robot robot. Yeah. On the triggers, I will say new trigger. Uh, once in a day, repeat every five minutes, yeah, for the duration of a day. Okay. I would say the action to be run my script, which is here. It was called start bat. Mm. Where I have it, uh, 
start but this one okay and i don't have other condition uh, start uh, i will remove this stuff so basically the system will um, uh, will run without any uh, doubts okay and run it yeah and if i go here to my uh, um, system you can see here that i have this uh, uh, this uh, thing already um, ready already ready and running yeah and you can see here that the next run will be on 2154 yeah so what i will do i will go and write an email yeah so i will go to my uh not this one to the other one i can close this one i will go to uh, i think that was the right one let me open again yes so i'm i'm on the, the robot uh, email so I will write i will send an email to uh, Christian Negulescu, and I will say test for the schedule, blah, blah. Uh, hello, buddy, please auto respond, auto respond, respond. Okay. So I'll hit send. And um, um, normally the robot should uh, respond to us on. Um, uh, 2155 yeah because this will be run it will we'll see here that it's the last run and so on but like i said the recommendation is to to use the orchestrator yeah because here you need to have the the XAML directly on on this pc and you don't want to have the um, uh yes i i received the uh, uh, the email on outlook that's good but uh, we need to wait for the robot to, to read this stuff so we don't you, do, you don't want to have the xaml to uh, to this pc the best way is to go here publish your process on the uapat um, um, assistant and run it when you want from the from the uapat assistant yeah yeah this is just an example that okay you can do this basically from my point of view how i see it you will do this on your um, small PC when you do one robot, two robots, and then when you go higher, you will buy the orchestrator and and do uh, the the correct stuff. And like I said, for the orchestrator, let me change also the resolution because now we don't need the uh, the higher uh, the uh, the higher resolution until he will respond. Okay. So the best way is to go and uh, schedule to the orchestrator. And like I said, there uh, there is a lot of um, uh, uh, the way to schedule here with times, with queues, and you have also on the GitHub, you have all the uh, Power Automate, yeah? So on the GitHub here, uh, um, you have the code for the Power Queue, how the Power Automate will be able to write on the queue, and this will start your process on the orchestrator, yeah? So you can see that uh, uh, in this time when we talk, it's 21.54, we'll wait for the 21.55. Look, he started, yeah? Without me doing anything. So he started the process, and uh, uh, if we go here to the task manager, we'll do a refresh, and you will see that, uh, um, uh, not now, we'll see that uh, uh, the robot was uh, work on uh, 2154, 40 minutes, and the next one will be on 2159. And normally if I go to my email, I have the response, yeah? So in this way, from the task schedule, the system was able to call the XAML file and do a schedule on this. I will uh, I will uh, disable this one because I don't want to uh, to do any more uh, testing on on this stuff. So that was the idea how to uh, um, basically how to read emails with Outlook. Use the filters. Like I said, I prefer the .NET one, uh, but you can use also filters from Outlook. You can uh, have the trigger from the orchestra, which I recommend, and you can do also the schedule on the Windows. As usual, thank you very much. Uh, remember to subscribe to my YouTube page and ask me what else you want to see on my channel. 
Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye-bye.